Good day. Was he buns off, bloke? Yeah, you go. Good day, guys. Well, today wasn't the video that I thought I was going to do. Today is not the video that I thought I was going to do. I thought I was going to do a tour of my bonsai benches. But instead, here we are, we're going to do a repot and a fairly hard trim of my peppercorn tree. So the reason why is it's absolute crap outside. So I thought I would do a repot and shed instead. And it doesn't look like the wind's going to die off anytime soon. So repot it is. Let's get into it. So first thing, I want to show you my first ever bonsai pot that I've ever made. I made this at a pottery class with Luke Parsons. So he's a well-known Australian potter. And he did some classes with the club. And this is how she turned out. So usable for sure. Not too bad. Should have put... A double B in there, Aussie bonsai bloke, but anyway. So she turned out not too bad considering I finished making this thing and I thought, oh yeah, I suppose it looks around about the right shape. Got a bit of texture on it, should be alright. Well, then it came to painting it and I absolutely stuffed it up. Just looked like an absolute mess, like a bloody one year old had painted it. And I left the class very dejected, thinking I'm never going to show that damn thing in public. I might even smash it when I get home. And pretty much left, left like that, thinking that's it. And then um, he showed up with this pot a few weeks later. And I must say it's actually turned out pretty good compared to what it did look like. I'll show you the photos of what it did look like and you'll understand. There you go, so you probably saw that it looked like absolute crap. But anyway, so there's my first go at a pot, I thought I would do that. While I'm doing show and tell, been busy making these uh, little part like nesting boxes. I've got a bit of bedding in there and a little front so that only a part like can fit in there. So I've made about 10 or so of those. And Another thing I've been busy doing is I had to go up making a, a Rosella nesting box. So, that's the bottom there. So, pretty heavy and they're quite big. I followed the plans and the Rosella box is way, way bigger than a little Pardlo box. I ran out of green so I had to paint it blue. But anyway. We get an Adelaide Rosella in there, quite bright anyway, so there you go. So, been busy doing that, but anyway, let's get on to the repot. So, repot, well, this peppercorn tree has been struggling the last year or two in this pot. I think the pot's too small for it, so I want to give it a bit more room. Now the two that I have in mind are both plastic pots, but still look decent, you know. Um, but I want to get a, I want to get the tree out of that pot first, and then let's see what these two look like as to which one we'll use. This one's got a bit more depth to it. This one, as in like from front to back. Okay, and this one's got it's a little bit skinnier but it's a little bit deeper, a tiny bit deeper. This is in quite a narrow pot already, as you can see. So it'll, it'll fit in either pot, but we'll see. And hopefully we can bring this thing back to health. I haven't repotted it for a while. And it also needs a hard cut back. So I'm gonna cut it back pretty hard. So let's pull it out of its pot and see what See how hard it is to pull out of that pot. Pretty 
behind. Yeah, we got it. We got it. Okay. So she come out all right. And that's the pot that she was in. It's a freebie from the side of the road. I think maybe just a bit too small. Um, before I get to putting it in, the, in a pot, I think we should cut the top down a bit, reduce the height. So I had in mind that I would take it down con considerably. So I'll just get my snips. You can see in here, the only looking of good roots is actually from a weed up here. <laughs> These roots here just look old and half rotten. Like it hasn't really grown much for a long time. It has tried to start putting on some um, fresh growth. Don't know if you can see that tip right there. But that tip it's just starting to push out new growth and there's quite a few around on the tree like that it's just gone through a couple of frosts and they don't like frost I find the pepper tree to be a reasonably temperamental plant they love fertilizer don't like frost don't like their roots played around with tops on the other hand you can go pretty hard on them so I'm going to just really get this thing back, get some shape into it. It's got long and leggy over time. So let's just get in here and just cut things back hard. And let it reshoot where we need it to have actual shoots. And get rid of some of this long legginess that it's developed over the years. And this looks dramatic, and I suppose it is in a way, but I'm just to the point where it's outgrown its design. It did look pretty good in this design, but over time, every year, it's got more and more leggy with only a little bit of tip growth and no side growth. So if I chop it back hard today, we can hopefully promote some good side side growth rather than just every year the tip extends a bit, extends a bit, extends a bit and then we end up with all these long leggy branches so you can still see what's going on yeah so I've just got to work out how hard I want to cut it back I could come right back to here, but I don't think it needs that. I think I think we're okay with keeping a little bit of the legginess on the inside. We don't want to go right back to nothing, I don't think. So... When it regrows out again, we will have, you know, a better outside silhouette of the tree rather than the long leggy one. It sort of did suit it when it was in full leaf, even how it is now. But because it has such a hard time after the frost and also has a hard time you know, just living in this pot, it's become quite leggy. And it hasn't been shooting back and bushing out as much as it used to. It used to bush out a lot more and make this big tree look more believable. Like a big old tree that's hanging down. But because it hasn't really been bushing out like that, Recently, it just looks a bit silly. So we're going pretty hard on it, as you can see. We'll have the back shorter than the front. The front will be a bit longer. Uh, 
and then come to the come back to the front of the tree and just decide whether we think look in the camera because that's a good way to check you like if I look myself into the camera I can see not all is perfect in the world but that's what old age does to you or older age so we'll bring you in a bit now it's quite a beefy trunk so I think it can support a bit of a wide canopy right still still I'm not sure about some of these branches up here I really didn't want to bring this thing back to nothing but in typical me fashion it may end up like that Chop out anything really meaty on the outside. Let some fine stuff take over, I suppose. Let the finer stuff grow out. Don't like this one in here at all. Is another is another bloody few inches this tree shrinks. If I do five or six rounds of this tree, we're gonna end up with nothing bloody left. So I better settle it down at that, I think. And possibly come back to this tree just as I walk past it and see what I think. But first we'll get rid of a couple more really big long ones. Sammy, stop it. Okay, we are really hitting it hard. Such a nice smell cutting this tree back. Okay, every time we do a cut, we can bring the camera in a bit closer. Okay, well, I do not like... <coughs> do not like this kinky branch in here. One of those has got to go. There's two of them. There and there. One has to go. Possibly both. Let's get rid of this one. I think that's enough. I think we can get rid of that one and that's it. Okay. And I think we follow the direction of the tree that way over here, which means possibly get rid of this long one outside. Shorten this side up a bit. It's not bad. Then follow the direction over that way so that side can be a bit longer. But I will snip him back just a bit. Is that needed? I don't know. Maybe I'll leave that because it's got some nice fine branch. If I cut it back to here, what's the point? Because it's only dividing. You're only getting it one inch closer. Right, let's leave it at that. 
And now let's go into the repot. The repot will be quite gentle. I know it's pretty hard to believe after I've gone so damn hard on the top, but I'm planning on going gentle. Yeah, there's still, still a straight section I don't like there. Maybe this whole lot is just competing with the top too much. I know it can be a multi trunk, but no, we'll leave that. I think that will have to do. Yeah. There's only so much we can do because from the start I've just kept a single trunk and put branches out because I developed this tree back when I did everything like a pine style and there's only so much we can do unless we chop the whole thing back and I've had this tree since I started bonsai so 14, 15 years so I don't want to go to that extent right now right so let's get into the repot I'm legitimately just going to clean out the top of this moss without going too hard on it so that we can mainly get rid of the weeds. A big weed in the side here. That pulls most of those little buggers out. Pull the moss off the top. Go right the way around like that. Just scratch in there a little bit, but not too much. As you can see, not a lot of bloody growth of the roots, so it just has not been happy this last summer and the frost in the winter. I think this was on the bench that dried out in summer, so when I went away on a holiday in summer, the bench is all dried out and I think this one here nearly lost everything so it's probably where a lot of the roots have gone on this one. There's certainly not what you would consider a healthy tree, there's bugger all roots. There's a root there, definitely a peppercorn root. And once I get down to that root level, I'm stopping before I do any real damage. Like I say, we're only going fairly light on this tree. You don't want to be crazy about it. When I put it into this pot, I had to do some major chopping and I knew that they already didn't like to be repotted much, but I took the gamble and it didn't die on me, which is great, but it also hasn't thrived, you know? So the gamble definitely has told me that no, you went too small. I need more room. So we're going to give it a bit more room. And we're also going to give it a little bit more open mix. As you can see, no roots even growing into the um, fly mesh. You can tell there, she's not got a lot of roots. So we're not going to go very hard on it at all. Another thing I didn't do with this tree is I didn't fertilize it this last year. So you can see the bottom of the trees there. Um, the reason for not fertilizing it, well, I think lost a lot of motivation and you know, it just didn't, didn't take care of my trees at all. 
and I think these things really like some fertilizer. So as you can see, I'm not going too hard on it. Just a little bit of a tear at the edge. I mean, it could be that pot too, you know, like that pot is a almost a terracotta type pot and maybe it sucks too much moisture out on the edges so the roots don't like it, so they don't want to hit, hit the edge of the pot because it gets too dry. So that could be a thing. I know we think of peppercorn as a very drought tolerant plant, which they are but everything has a limit. So as you can see, it's pretty much got a compact root system in the shape of that other pot, minus the outside inch where it didn't even bother growing. So it does have roots, which is a good thing. And there are actually little white fine new roots growing so it is definitely in its growth pushing out trying to push out a bit of growth at the top and the bottom to recover and we're going to put it in a nice bigger pot with a better mix of soil rather than this soggy stuff that it was in and just water it more often but with an open mix so we'll have more air and hopefully rebuild a better, a better root system. And put it on a regimented fertilizer, fertilizer regime. All right, let's chuck it in a pot. Thought I wasn't recording there for a second. Okay, so we got pot number one. You can see heaps of room to put soil front and back, sides, even a bit on top. So it's more of a rounded one. It's oval, but it's rounded, so that could suit the rounded look of this canopy. You can see it's all hollow in here. All hollow. Could clean a bit of that out too. Just get it out of this pot. Peppercorn wood rots really quickly. So we could clean that out. It's even pushed a few roots into the rotted out soil up here. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. That's probably all right. It's not too, there's a bit of picky stuff up here. You can see there's some roots. <laughs> roots dangling up here. Well, sorry mate, but I took your soil away. You're going to have to cark it. Alright. So, you got that one. A little bit more rounded. Put it to the left of the pot. Let it lean over like that. Or... this one a bit deeper you see sits quite a bit deeper you've got more opportunity to put more soil on top and maybe put a little bit less underneath Quite a bit less room front and back. 
I think overall this one's going to give us more room and I think that's what I'm really aiming at trying to do on this rig pot so let's do that let's do this one uh, this pot by the way was given to me by a, um, a viewer of the channel Roger thanks Roger for giving me this pot and you know couldn't have been perfect more perfect timing Rog because she's going in try to wire it in there but by the time you get a bit of soil around there it's going to be pretty firm so I'm pretty happy with that so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some gutter guard and mesh on all the holes make sure we got plenty of that stuff Just cover up all your holes. You can wire them in um, the holes to make sure they don't move. It's up to you. I suggest you probably do, but I never have, and well, apart from once or twice, and I'm not about to start today too much. Not going to worry too much, not about to start today because I never really had a problem with not worrying them in. I suppose the first time I get bit from not wiring in these mesh screens will be when I change the way I do it. Until then, I apologise to all those bonsai purists out there that want you to do every job to perfection well I'm not a perfectionist so sorry right put a bit in the bottom a bit of soil I'm going to put the tree over to the left over here give it a good wiggle, wiggle a wiggle wobble a wiggle wobble And find a good level. As you can see, this one's only going to just cover the top of the roots. But we do want to see this nice face anyway. It's nice glare. You don't really want to cover that. I just want to work out why this one side's not going down. It's more so there's not enough in the other side. Right, I'm just going to put a bit more on this side. It's a bit of a void over there. Okay. You can probably put it slightly to the one side. Generally, if it leans that way, put it to this side a bit. Nothing's hard and fast rule, but... I can still get a bit of soil in here, a lot front to back, and a lot on that side, so... I'm pretty happy with how much soil we'll be able to put in. And then, basically... Just 
just want to give it a little in there. Squash it in with your fingers if you want. Get it out with your hands. Yeah, I found this tree to be a little bit temperamental. So, although I'm giving you guys advice on how to look after them and whatever, if someone has any advice on their peppercorn and it's really thriving, let me know because this one has thrived at times, but it's also been quite sad like now at times as well. So I'm definitely no expert. I'm just having a go and, you know, just sh just sharing my experiences with this one peppercorn, which is the only one that I own. And my experience is every time I've repotted hard on it, which is maybe two or three times in the past, it's really soaked. And I have talked to a couple of other people and they've um, relayed the same thing and even had them die. So I suppose if there's one thing to take away, at least it's still alive. <laughs> Right, so after that, I'm just going to grab the handles of the, the snips, just shove it in pretty tight. So yeah, just squash it in there. I'll try to be quick. I could edit this out, but I'll just try and be quick. Yep. Obviously the first month, month or two, you don't go putting it straight out and 50 knots of wind in the middle of the open because it will topple out of the pot. And that's a good reason why you should tie your trees into their pot but you know I'm a bit slack no real excuse I know but I've also not had much problem in the past so there you go that's you know I've had a few that have maybe changed their angle a bit on me and then I've lived with the angle change that they made themselves but I haven't had any catastrophic failures from not wiring them in. Okay, so she's pretty firm. Without being silly about it, she's pretty firm. And then once you water it, and um, you know, she's been in that pot for a month, she'll be pretty good. Just put it in a little bit of a sheltered spot from the wind, which generally we have our bonsais anyway. Right, let's get some moss on it. Collected a bit of moss earlier. I'm still going to put a good amount of moss on this tree. Go all the way around. Partly why I wanted to do a um, tour of the uh, bonsais. Because I was a bit out of time this week, so I've been a bit slack getting this video done. And I thought a tour of the bonsais, if I do that, you know, be a half hour video and then editing super easy on a tour because you don't edit anything, you just basically post it up how it is, no editing, no cut and paste. But you know, the wind has changed my plans, so here we are repotting this one. And it's just going to be a little bit of a longer video, and I also have a little bit of editing to do. But partly, while I'm still blabbering on so much at the moment, is I'm planning on my editing being very minimal. I'm just going to post it up and you guys can watch this whole repot. So it'll be a bit like a demonstration in a way of a repot. 
and I'm just basically keeping on moving my mouth just for the sake of it, but hopefully you get something out of that. So yeah, as far as my rewilding project of my trees, um, out in the paddock, I also want to do a tour of those, which will be separate to the bonsai tour. But similar thing, when I have had a calm day, I haven't been motivated to get out there and do it. And then when I am motivated, the wind has other ideas. So we've had a few windy days lately, but I want to do a tour of the um, planted trees in the landscape and maybe my garden as well. And show you guys how everything is growing in and it is growing in some of the some of the trees would be 15 foot high a lot of them are still only anywhere from 6 to 10 foot some are only freshly planted and are barely at the guard but i would say the majority of them are 4 to 10 foot maybe four to eight foot but I will be showing you guys that too um, as far as temperature and climate well we are now moving into spring our last month of winter this year has been super super warm so normally August which is our last month of winter before spring We'll get a hint of one, maybe one warm day that might hit 25, 26. But we had a whole week of 25 to 26. And this weekend, which is still August, last week of winter, is shaping up to be anywhere from 22 to 28 for another four or five days straight. So I think we could end up we certainly will somewhere in the state, but even where I am, we probably will end up with the warmest or, uh, August or last month of winter that we've ever had on record ever. So, you know, climate change or not, whatever you believe, the, the stats are that this particular August, we are in for a in for a record breaker potentially and to come with that there's also been no rain we've had almost no winter rain where i live we've gone through we went through summer with way below average and now we're going through winter with way below average to put it into context, we're meant to get, we're pretty much a desert here anyway, so we only get 13 inches a year, or 325 mil. But, so that's the average, 325 mil. And up until now, we should be already up to about 300, uh, sorry, 200 and 35 to 40 mil and right now we're only sitting at 135 mil so we're about 100 mil behind which four inches doesn't sound a lot to some people but that is a third of our yearly rainfall that hasn't even come yet so we could end up we could end up with only two thirds of our yearly rainfall this year um, which is not great when you're trying to rewild your landscape and water is expensive so you can't keep watering them you've got to let them live on their own but anyway there you go so while I've been yabbering on about trees and upcoming videos and all that jizzo we have finished with this repot.
So the last thing I might do is grab a rag and give it a bit of a wipe on the pot. So yeah, let's let's clean up the table. Give uh, Roger's pot a little bit of a wipe. If I was to show it in this plastic pot, it can be done. You can show it in a plastic pot. I wouldn't frown upon it myself too much. You know, you can only do what you can afford. And yeah, like I say, I wouldn't frown on it. But what you could do is you could put a little bit of WD-40 or cooking oil around the thing as a plate on Adrian Eggleton's turntable. So hopefully we have enough height to spin it. We'll see. But yeah, then you'll get that wet look. You'll get that wet look around the whole thing if you did WD-40 at the moment. It's a bit faded, so it's just going to go back to that brownish colour. So yeah, if you want to, if you want to show it, we've got some friends coming around for dinner, and you want to put it out on the patio for everyone to see. You can just shine it up a bit with a bit of WD-40. As long as you keep it on the outside of the pot, it's fine. It will never make its way inside. Get that on a dinner plate and the turntable. See, I normally wouldn't show you guys me cleaning up the table. But today, one, you're in for a longer video because you get to see everything. And two, I got bugger all editing to do, which is great. But if I wanted to get a video out this week, well, that's what we got. So, let's have a good look at that one. I'll bring it in close first and do a spin of the bottom. As you can see the pot. If you wet it, she'll brown up the whole thing. But anyway, so there's a nice deep dark hollow. Get a few spiders living in that. Give you a spin. It's a beautiful, beautiful trunk on it. Absolutely beautiful. Moss will grow back on there pretty quickly. Actually, I won't be lazy. I'll put a bit on there now. Some people say not to let moss grow up your tree, but I think it kind of suits this tree, to be honest. Let's have a bit of moss. I'll rip off that liverwort. We don't want that. Don't want liverwort on your tree. Liverwort's not great. It has roots that go quite deep into the soil. Okay. Here we go. So, let's keep on with that spin. I'll do another one. All right, now let's go back and do a bit of a spin. Up and that way. You can see it looks like a bit stumpy now that we got rid of a lot of those branches, but I think in the long run it'll be good for the tree. And I think it will also push a lot of back budding and a lot more ramification because it's now going to push all its energy out way further back in the tree. And they back bud very well. Snip, snip. Maybe.
Well, there you go, guys. From my first handmade pot. The bird boxes through to potting up the tree. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, Aussie Bonsai Bloke. Please like, share, subscribe. Tell your mates about the channel. But most of all, have fun with your bonsai. And try and involve whoever you can into it. Talk about it. Get them into it. Because it is a great thing to get with your mates and, you know, work on a tree. No worries. Cheers for watching. And catch you later. Cheers.